This week, our government made an official announcement, and I quote just one line out of it. It said, the South African government has taken a decision to recall Ambassador Sisa Ngabani with immediate effect. Who is Sisa Ngabani? He was South Africa's ambassador to Israel. He was stationed in Tel Aviv, and he has now been brought back to South Africa. An ambassador's job is to, be, to lead the diplomatic relationships between two countries, to represent their own country in a foreign country, and to speak on behalf of the leadership of the home country, which in this instance, of course, is South Africa. Why am I using this topical item to introduce today's sermon? Because we too are ambassadors. Each one of us are an ambassador for Jesus. And sometimes you can wonder, when you look at an ambassador and how they function, you can Sometimes wonder how on earth could such a person be an ambassador. Well, I wonder sometimes what Jesus thinks of us. How on earth can we be his ambassadors sometimes? But yes, we are called to be his ambassadors. In 2 Corinthians 5.20 it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. This is not a foreign concept I'm introducing here. This is a biblical teaching. And it goes on to say, that, that scripture goes on to say, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You see, an ambassador speaks on behalf of the leadership of his country. God has got us speaking on his behalf, and this is what he is calling us to say. He is calling us to plead with people or make people to plate. Be reconciled to God. That is the, our, our mission as ambassadors. And we too as ambassadors one day are going to be called home. Remember, we are just sojourners in this earthly world. We are on our way to our heavenly home. Does this statement about being recalled home confuse you at all? Well, the Bible clearly teaches us that God will call us home soon. Let me give you a few scriptures for the critics amongst you. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. This is a mystery the Apostle Paul is sharing here. We shall not all sleep. We will not all die one day. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal put, must put on immortality. You've read that scripture before. It needs to resound within your heart in the days in which we're living what is this passage talking about? It's talking about the day when Jesus comes to take home his people. The trumpet shall sound. Those who have gone on before us, all our forefathers who have made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, will rise up first. Will we see them? I'm not sure. The way it's written, maybe. And then we shall be caught up. And this fleshly body will be changed into a glorious body. Hallelujah. A glorious body that will not grow old, that will not be subject to death and decay. A body like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Who are His people? Who are the ones that Jesus is coming back for? Jesus isn't coming with a church register. To see how many times you came to church. That's not what it's about. He's coming dependent upon your heart. Those who have repented of their sin. And made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. Such people. The you and the me. Are referred to as the bride of Christ. 
And it is for his bride that Jesus is returning. In 1 Thessalonians 4, the Apostle Paul tells us about this return of Christ and what will happen. Including the souls who have already died along the way. Let's read. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. He wants us to understand. He wants us to have understanding. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who have died. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. I've grieved with many of you who have lost loved ones. But we don't grieve as those who have no hope. For we know. What do we know? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And you might say, well, here's a contradiction because the other passage says they're going to rise up and now they're coming back with him. Their bodies are going to rise up. Their spirit is in heaven. Your loved one who loved Jesus is in heaven. Their body is in the ground. Their body will be re resurrected and they will get a glorified body. So they will come as a spirit being and receive a glorified body as we are caught up and getting our glorified bodies. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. The Apostle Paul has given us this, right, this teaching that we, it may be of comfort to us. When we are laying a loved one to rest and our heart is bleeding and we are grieving the loss, we are to take comfort in the knowledge that it is not a final goodbye. It is an au revoir until we meet again. This phrase that we will be caught up, it comes from the Greek word hapatso, which means to snatch away suddenly. We will be snatched away. And there's a coming, a day in the not too distant future that this is going to happen. In all likelihood, in our lifetime. By the signs that are happening in the world today. A time when all of God's ambassadors on earth, both the dead ones who have already passed away, as well as those who are alive, will be recalled to heaven. Recorded for us in Matthew 24 is Jesus' response to, to the disciples' question as to when the end of time will be. And that whole chapter... I invite you to read it again, that whole chapter of Matthew 24. But here are some verses out of it. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. We need to be ready, folks. 
He is coming at a time we do not expect. You will be going about your daily business. Maybe you'll be on your way to work, on your way to the shops. You might have your head tucked into the pillow. You will be doing everyday things when Jesus returns. And when that trumpet sounds, it will be too late. It will be too late to say, oh, I wanted to leave it to the last moment to make Jesus my Savior. But it will be too late. Please read the whole of Matthew 24 where Jesus describes the things which will be happening in those days. And the generation that sees these things happening will be the generation that is alive at the time of the rapture. What are those things? You know them. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Do you know how many earthquakes are happening at the moment? You might say, well, maybe one a month. No, no, no. Try like 20 a day. Go and do some research. Go and Google earthquakes, current earthquakes. You will be surprised in diverse places. In Philippians 3.20, the apostle Paul declares our citizenship. He says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. All these passages talking about the same event as being transformed in the twinkling of an eye and being recalled. Citizens of heaven, ambassadors of Jesus, Some people declare that the rapture is an erroneous and ridiculous teaching. As God couldn't take millions of people suddenly out of the world, that's their thinking, citing the fact that the word rapture does not appear in the Bible, they base their argument upon that. The word rapture actually comes from the Latin word rapia, which means rapid. It will rapidly happen. It will suddenly happen in the twinkling of an eye. It will be too quick for anyone to quickly put right now because it's happening. Do you realize that there's already a documented rapture in the Bible? Have you read that before? When did it happen? All the way back in the very beginning in the book of Genesis. It's as if God is opening up time with a rapture and ending time with a rapture. In Genesis 5 we read, So all the days of Enoch were 365. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. The first documented rapture in the Bible. The man of Enoch. And his rapture is repeated in the New Testament. In Hebrews 11.5, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So here we have a documented case of a rapture. So if anyone tells you a rapture cannot happen, God cannot do that, you can tell them it has already happened before. But that isn't an isolated incident that we read of in the Bible. Because in 2 Kings we read of another rapture, this time Elijah. Who can remember what transported Elijah up into heaven? You think so? Let's read. Then it happened. As they continued on and talked, that a suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Yes, there was a chariot of fire, but Elijah was not on it. A chariot of fire separated Elijah from Elisha. And God raptured Elijah. A second case in the Bible. 
Isaiah also experienced a type of rapture when he found himself briefly in the throne room of God. And I just want to read this excerpt from Isaiah 6 verse 2. It says, above it stood seraphim. He's describing what he saw when he was in heaven. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of Him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah was taken from earth and shown the throne room. It was a type of being caught up and then being brought back down. That is my third example of a type of rapture. So don't say that God can't do this because he's done it multiple times. Do you remember Philip? We have that weird story of Philip's transport. A unique experience. We don't read of any other, any other person having this experience. Philip was baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. And when they came up out of the water, Philip disappeared and appeared instantly in another city. It is a catching up and a putting down, a kind of rapture. Certainly a catching up, which is where the hapatso comes from. In Acts 8, we read it. Now, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. So that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So here we have Philip's transport. He baptizes. He comes up and immediately is in another city. God caught him up and God put him down. God can do some amazing things. Don't doubt that God can take millions of people. To heaven. Paul also experienced a catching up of himself into the third heaven. What is the third heaven? Well, the way we understand it, where the birds are flying is the first heaven, where the stars are situated is the second heaven, and where God is dwelling is the third heaven. That is the best way that I can understand what, uh, that I can explain what is the third heaven, God's dwelling place. He, if, you, if you read there in 2 Corinthians 12, you'll re Paul is giving his explanation of what happened. But there was another one. There was Jesus with his ascension to heaven. That was a type of rapture. In Luke 24, we read, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Multiple examples of raptures that have already happened. And then there are still two more mentioned. We have the two witnesses in Revelation 11, which is something that is going to be happening in the not too distant future. And you are going to see this these two witnesses on the news broadcasts. Now after the three and a half days, remember that they were killed. The Antichrist killed the witnesses. And after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come, wait a minute, come up here. And they ascended ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. That is another rapture that is going to be happening. And then we have the male child of Revelation 12, where the child is caught up to God and his throne. So don't let anyone tell you that a rapture is not possible. You've got various examples of raptures already. Don't be perturbed. There's going to be many naysayers. And there's going to be many people that Jesus tells us that says, Oh, the Christ is over there like we had in Australia some years ago. 
Some dude declared that he was Christ and everyone must come see him. Don't even bother. When Jesus comes back, you will know. You don't need a person or a news station to tell you that Jesus is here or there. Jesus is with you now. And when Jesus comes back, you will know. Genesis 5 was a long time ago. It was right in the beginning. God was already doing that which God was doing. Because God does what God wants to do. What is your conviction concerning the rapture? Do you think there's no way that this could happen? Well, think again. Because it's soon going to happen. It's coming to a city near you. In fact... It's coming to whatever city you are living in, no matter which country of the world you are in. There will be no country that is left out. There will be opportunity for every single person on earth to be raptured. Of course, most will not take that opportunity. They will mock it, and they will mock you for believing it. The way they mocked Noah when he was building the ark. When Noah built the ark, no rain had ever fallen on earth. God had watered the plants through a mist. They could never understand what it was for rain to fall. Noah wasn't building his ark on the beach. He was building his ark where he lived. He didn't have to take his boat to the water. God would bring the water to his boat. It's a sure coming event. And you don't want to miss it, believe me. You think this world is bad now. Much worse is coming. But Jesus is a savior of his people. So whether he uses a cloud by day or a pillar of fire by night, or whether we are caught up to be with him, just know that God is watching over you. He watches over his own. And he draws us nearer as a hen gathers her chicks. And covers them with, his, with her wings. So God is calling in His people. He is calling you in closer to Him. To be under the covering of His wings. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide to the presence of the Almighty. He's calling us in folks. Get close to God. If you do not have the assurance of God's protection of your soul, then please speak to me after service. Give me opportunity to help you to have this assurance. Because God wants us to be secure in His love. God wants us to know that everything He's written in the Bible is true and will happen. It has either happened already or it is yet to happen but it will happen. And if you were to do a study of the prophecies of the Bible that have already come true, and some of those prophecies are impossible prophecies. Just the birth of Jesus. Impossible. So many things making it unlikely to have happened, but it happened exactly as Scripture prophesied. You can be sure that that which has not yet been fulfilled will be fulfilled as accurately as what that that has already been fulfilled has been done. God's Word stands true. God's Word needs to be embraced. God's Word needs to be devoured. God's Word needs to be put into your heart. Because these are tough times we're living in. And the enemy wants to kick you about. He wants to make you feel worthless. He wants to make you feel that God has abandoned you. He wants to make you feel that there is no purpose for your life. That you may as well just die. Well, next week I will be speaking on purpose. That we as God's children have purpose in our life. So join, join me for that next Sunday. But to close this message off, I wrote a poem. 
which I'd like to share with you. It's called Time's Running Out. The hustle and bustle of a city at work. Business, businessmen shopping for the latest murk. Single moms working double just to hold off the tide. Airports bristling with passengers wanting the other side. Go, 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 you must work faster. Work, 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 you must work harder. Pay, pay, pay as prices gouge your pocket. Inflation's taken off like Elon's rocket. Everyone is rushing to get something done. No one's got time to spend with anyone. The system is designed to keep you oh so busy. Your head starts to spin like your dizzy lizzy. Suddenly a trumpet sounds. What was that noise? People are ascending, disappearing in the clouds. Must be the aliens who abducted them. That's what the news anchor's saying on CNN. Mayhem and panic is all around. Jesus was the one who by each must be found. Why was I so busy? Each one asks himself. Now opportunity has gone and I'm left on the shelf. Open up your eyes and look above. There's a God who died for you to show you his love. He's calling out your name, so don't miss the boat. He's already started separating the sheep from the goat. Heavenly Father, I just lift this message up to you, Lord. And I ask that you weave it as a reality in our hearts and in our minds. There is so much that is trying to discredit your word in this world. But we are those who stubbornly stand fast in the knowledge, Lord, that your word is truth. Everything else needs to be measured against your word. The world wants to measure your word against their, their systems and throw out your word because it doesn't match. But it's their systems that are wrong. It's the world's system that's wrong. It's their thinking that's wrong. Help us, Lord, to change our ways according to your word. Not try to change your word according to our ways. Help us, Lord, to know that everything that has been fulfilled prophetically has been fulfilled perfectly. There is no doubt, there is no reason to doubt that that which must still be fulfilled will be anything less than perfectly done so. Help us to be those, Lord, who are encouraged by your word. Holding on, Lord, and serving the God of hope. Flowing in hope to the level where we can give hope to others who have no hope. Help us to be hope bringers, Lord, into a hopeless world. To shine the light of Jesus into the darkness of this world. And to bring life, Lord, into the death of this world. We look forward to your return, Lord. But in the meantime, we want to spread your light. We want to be your ambassadors, pleading with people. To be reconciled to God. Enduring their mockery. But having clean hands. After sharing that which you have given us to share. Help us Lord to be so strong in your love. So held tight in your arms. That no matter what this world throws at us. We will stand securely and solidly serving you. Loving you and loving others despite the way they might come against us. You are the God of love and you've called us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us, Lord, through your enabling grace to be able to do the impossible that you call us to. And I say impossible not because it's not possible, but because it goes against, Lord, everything in our nature. Help us, Lord. We need you. I lift up this people and I speak your enabling grace. I speak your encouragement. I speak the truth of your word into their lives, Lord. Help them to go into this world and to live your truth. Fill them afresh, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that they may have the boldness to speak, the courage to be able to speak up, even if they are a lone voice in the wilderness, declaring the way of the Lord. Your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. Be blessed.